Hey, we're, we're not peeing that lady, are we? If you're feeling lonely today, come along and throw your cares away. We'll be glad that you're our friend, and this is a friendship that'll never, ever end. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Plank and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back and relax, and let's welcome your host, Plank, Sell, and Mark! Hello and welcome to the Blake Tower Show, episode number 476. Did you actually expect a different intro today, honestly? Let, I'm your host, Blake. Let me bring on my co-host. First of all, the biggest heel in podcasting, a man who is actually not just warning what we're talking about today, but also warning the closing of Once Upon a Time on Broadway. The biggest heel in podcasting. Seth, how you doing? I'm just not having a good week this week. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. I didn't you know what's funny? I didn't I didn't write that down. I'm like, wait, I should just bring that up now. This is gonna be a sovereign <laughs> show anyway. I'm just bring that up now. <laughs> <laughs> um and let's bring on our other co-host, Man is Legend. The um, the man who decided to just put the WWE logo on his background instead of doing like a white themed background. Let's bring on our wrestling star Mark Dad. How you doing? Doing well. See, yeah. the W doesn't stand for WWE. It stands for Wyndham and Wyatt. What's funny? I thought WWE stood for Walk with Elias. Like, <laughs> who? Exactly. All right. Thank um, you. So, um, as people can tell, listening to this, um, this is not going to be a typical show. We opened up with the uh, Firefly Funhouse theme. Could not resist that opening. And also, we went into uh, Mark Roser's Live in Fear, which was, of course, Bray Wyatt's theme music. The original theme music for Bray Wyatt. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find this one on Spotify, so I had to go on YouTube to grab this. Well, was, for some reason, WWE has every other Bray Wyatt theme, but this one on Spotify. I have no idea why. But anyway, okay. um, had to use it to open the show today, though. Um, My and big head is blocking the background. Well, I see it though. It works though. It works. So we um okay. I'm just gonna warn people right now. This is gonna be a really strange show. It was um really hard for me to actually organize this show. Plus, we have a guest coming on in a little while as well. So it's it, it, I can't I can't edit the run sheet. So oh, that's weird. Um, so it's going to be a really strange show today. I but we are going to get right into things as the music fades out in the background. <clears throat> Help support the show on Panel Five. You can find the show and other we work on, including the upcoming Clerks Minute Return next year at leavelakeofsouth.com. Sal. Yeah, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, pieces of scrap paper, and more from our T Public store. Click on the T Public link on our website, or go to T Public and search it. Like it's also. So, um, hey, I have an idea. Good. Why don't we have Blake and Cecil with Mark Memorial Bands? Because none of we're not dead. <laughs> no, no, dead. no, no. But I'm saying when. <laughs> What one of us died? A, a, 
<laughs> wrestling legend or actor or musician passes away, you can put on the armband. You know, I never, I, 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 you know, it's funny. I, I know everyone like praising WWE for all the money going to charity for the white stuff. Th- that might just be the most capitalistic idea I've ever heard. <laughs> 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 but um, on all items, actually available. By the way, if you do go to the public, I learned this time I wanted to get some new stickers for a binder for work. You, you have to put in Blake and Sal show all is one word or our stuff doesn't come up. Just to warn you, just to let people know that. So I didn't. Oh, I, wonderful. Was, yeah, they changed their algorithm and now you have to put in all or ningers all in one word. So I found that out myself because I was looking for like stickers of our show to put on my binder for work. So, <laughs> all right, what's gonna bring? We're coming back. All right, we are back. Um, as always, go pick up Mandy's book. Not making a big return apparently. Um, right now at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Orange Hat Publishing, and they're saying in Spanish. And go listen to a new episode of the Mandy and Mandy Show dropped in right before our show, part of the Baker South Show family. I haven't listened yet because it was a clean show. So I, it was a clean show, and it, I, I don't have to do the editing. I don't have to do the show until it posts. So <laughs> all I know is it's not nearly as controversial as last week, as the last show. But still, a lot of fun. They have their first giver guest this week. So go listen to that right now. All right. Um, so we're gonna we're we're going to split up the um, memorials on this show. We're going to split them up, because if we do three in a row, this whole show would be depressing. So we're going to split them up. We're not going to do them all at once. Um, we're going to start with this one. It's funny, we actually are able to play this song twice in a... um. Chasing a couple of weeks now because we closed the show just a couple weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> we did. We did not know. No, we did. Actually, it was funny. Last week when we had Annie on the show, she changed her background at one point to the Price is Right background. At yes, one point in the show, and we again we didn't know what was about to happen a couple of days. We were going to lose Bob Barker at age of ninety nine. At least he went out in his sleep with no issues. He was just old. It happens, and unfortunately, we lost a legend, an absolute fucking legend, oh, in yeah. Bob Barker. Ah, my childhood hurt. My childhood hurt on this one. Like it really hurt. Yes. <laughs> this one hurt. Yes. Um, I by the way, I did go back and I watched um Bob Barker's appearance on Raw, and the first fifteen minutes of that is some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. Him <laughs> 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 and Jericho was some of the funniest shit, especially knowing that a lot of that was improv. And Bob was just oh, was it? slow. Bob was just going with the flow of the show and the weirdness of Raw. And it made oh, nice. more fun knowing that now because I read that in Brother Your Words book that a lot of that was improv. That was just <laughs> Bob being Bob. And that makes it even more fun to watch it back. <laughs> when when he was guest host, it was hilarious. Yeah, the knowing that a lot of the stuff that was on stage in front of the crowd was improv that was just Bob being Bob makes it even better when you rewatch it. Like <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the best the, the one thing I remember is when he had the price is right kind of solar set mini one. Oh I know, yeah, thing. exactly. And then and then all of a sudden, they're calling Santino, come on down. And he flips over the barricade. And he trips over the barricade. By the way, if you watch the Raw this week, and they did a tribute, they did not show Jericho. They did not show the Bellas. They did not show anybody. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Uh, my favorite part was watching Chris Jericho come in from the back with his name on his chest. Not a shirt on. Just his name on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I cracked up with that again. But anyway, Bob Barker, 99. I know the jokes are, oh, you came close to 100 without going over. That that joke is, is played and dead now at this point. But, um... <laughs> dead like Bob. Uh, pretty much. Oh. I, I'll lead up. That's not even the most tasteless thing I've heard this week when it came to Bob Barker. <laughs> <laughs> not the most tasteless thing I've heard this week. But, um, anywho, like I said... Wait, what else did you hear? I've heard some bad stuff. I've done some weird shit on TikTok. I've heard some weird shit. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> some people just Control said, the weird- animal population. Keep your dogs and cats spayed and neutered. Have your pets spayed and neutered. That's a good life. I, I, I remember I do because I watched that show every fucking day of the summer when I was younger. I mean, my grandma how, had a how crush many... on Bob Barker. Like, it was it was crazy that show. Uh, like, all the many, damn time. How many millennials actually kind of grew up watching Bob Barker here in Price is I Right? I think everybody did. I'm not going to lie. I don't Pretty know. much. Until yeah. when, when did the Drew Terry take over? Was it like 2008? 2009? Uh, I thought it was like seven, two thousand seven, something like that. Know. Something like that. So, like, Drew's been around for a long time now doing the show. I didn't realize how long it's been until somebody yeah. up his um Bob Berger's last show, and I was like, "It's really been that long since Bob Berger's last show." Like, <laughs> it's 
click. You know, well, weird. You guys, I remember I remember Bob Barker when he was the host of Beat the Clock a long time ago. Huh. That's and that's when I first saw him. And then when he started hosting on the price right, I'm going, they got the right guy for it. Yeah, and okay, so if you if you don't have if you have Pluto, there is a price is right Bob Barker all day station. After he yes. passed, I, I jumped on it just for a little while. I'm like, this is just so much fun. Like, just watching this match is just so much fun to do. Like, I, 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 I go over this sometimes. Doesn't I'm in a bad mood? I'll just turn on that station for a little while, just because it's <laughs> just, like for no other reason. The, just because it's entertaining. <laughs> the, the nice clips I like with Bar Barker are when these women come up stage and they're screaming, and yelling, and jumping, and all of a sudden he'll go like this, and they're going, "Okay, I think I can hear now." <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, by the way, I there were a clip on TikTok. Apparently, <laughs> there, a couple of years ago, his last appearance was actually a few years ago because he um they did an April Fool's joke and they introduced Drew Carey and Bob came out instead. Oh, I remember that. I remember the pandemic. I remember the pandemic. I completely forgot that happened because again, pandemic kind of wiped everyone out, brain out for a little while. But um, yeah, like that's amazing. By the way, it was 2007. I just looked it over. He went from 1972 to September 1972 to June 2007. That's, I thought that's as the host of the Price is Right. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, and who who can't forget the unforgettable scene in Happy Madison? Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. No, I like a Happy Madison. That's, that's, his... two, that's two different movies. That's literally oh, two no, no. movies. Billy it, it, Madison it... and Happy Gilmore. That's two different movies. Yeah, but isn't that yeah. the name of his production company? Yes, but the movie we're talking about is Happy Gilmore. <laughs> All right, well, there you <laughs> go. <about. laughs> if we're going to reference it, at least reference the movie. <laughs> but um, no, I, I did make sure we wanted to bring that up here because this one was hard. It wasn't as hard as others this week, but it was not a great end to the week. We're just mad here. Uh, <laughs> it was not a good end to our week. You know, yeah. They usually say that celebrity deaths come in threes, and it did this for that week. Well, it's, the wrestling world was hurt hard with this one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Rest in peace, Bob Barker. My, my, well, Mandy said it perfectly. Um, Grandma is up in heaven, fangirling right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want. So it, Mandy it, said it, that it, and made me laugh. Is, is she would she be waiting for you now, sir, and say, "Hey, come on down." I, my, my, when I say my grandma had a crush on Bob Barker, I'm not joking when I say those words. <laughs> it's not a joke at all. No, I, I didn't. Think, I mean... Like I know for a fact. In, on CBS, on, on CBS, you would watch. I, I forgot what came on at ten, and then it was Price is Right, and then it was for and then her stories came on right after Price is yes. Right. <laughs> it was her stories. CBS was her story station, so I, I knew that for a if, fact. If you if you oh, had someone... guiding lights in the morning, they'd be guiding lights to the mornings or something like that. Mm-hmm. They put it like ten a.m., which pissed off my grandma. I don't remember. Her, yeah, it screwed yeah. up her entire schedule. It screwed up her whole schedule because they moved her favorite show to her mornings. <laughs> it made her so mad. And then, and then, heaven forbid, the president came. Then. All programming was good for crap. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you don't want to piss off old ladies for when either a president comes to town or a president dies and you shut down all programming for a week. That That is the worst <laughs> thing in the world for any old lady that's home. I remember that. I forgot when a president died and like all programming was off for like an entire week and it pissed off my grandma so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's that. Let's move on. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right. Um, let's see. Where do we want to go? Let's go, let's go to Payback. The so WWE Payback is this Saturday. Before we get our guest on, he'll be on in a few minutes. Let's do this because he doesn't talk WWE. So let's do this. I had a theme song for it, but I forgot to put it in the Spotify. So I'm not playing it. Um, <laughs> I forgot to put it. I forgot. I, I had it written down, and then I had other thing. I got distracted by something else, and I forgot to put it in the Spotify. Add um, in later? Oh, I'm... My, I don't edit the show. I rarely edit the show as it is. Um, <laughs> gonna go. You know what's funny? If anyone listen to our um, if anyone go listen to our um, freaking con show, that how like detailed edited that show is compared to the show. It's absolutely <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, let's move on to payback this Saturday. It's funny because this Saturday, with the whole situ- situation with the punk, we're gonna talk about a little later. Could could Collision be in a worse death spot this week? Ever with the possibility of not having punk, and then you're up against college football's opening weekend and WWE held the PLA all at the same well, time. Well, <laughs> this is his own damn fault. I know it was like, could this be in a worse spot for collision this week? <laughs> um, so I- I'm not even sure how to feel about the Hayback card, except that it's pretty good. I'm a little annoyed that they're doing Gunther and Jack Gable on Monday, not on Saturday. So am I. 
They oh, really? That. They announced that after I think yeah. for an hour they announced that. Well, let's talk about that real fast. Gunther versus Chad Gable, Intercontinental Championship happening on Monday on Monday Night Raw. If Gunther beats Chad Gable, he has the record because the record apparently hits on like Thursday next week. So, yeah, does have, like... Gunther hit the record or not? That is the question, Sal. Yes. You cannot go this far to have him lose it. So, I say he retains, even if it's another count out or something. And we set up for the next pay per view or whatever. But it would be very Gunther to win by like DQ or something like that and then set up for whatever. Um, that I'm going to go against Green and say, no, he doesn't. That Chad Gable wins. Oh, well, you're wrong. So that's okay. Move well, on. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Sal Housen. You're the biggest heel in podcasting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what's funny is if, if Vince was running the show, I would say there's no way in hell he's going to have a very cocky tongue record and he's going to lose like on Monday. Because that's something Vince would do. Like, that's something Vince would totally do. But with Triple yeah, H, well, things, yeah. with all of that running things and him being the one that's like, I'm going to break all these records because I can. I feel like it's been a thing this year. There's, I, I, there's no way he comes to lose his money. There's just no way. There's no way this happens. And I, I would love to see Tag Game win. Please, don't get me wrong. I would love to see Tag Game win. I just don't see it happening yeah. this Monday. So, let me put this out there. Once he gets the record in his number one spot, do you think that there's going to be somebody that is going to just come up and challenge him and for the title? I think they wasted it last Monday when they did the count-out finish. Like Sal mentioned, I think they should have done that this Monday. Be like, uh-huh. keep this way to the record, and nobody remembers that in the future. And nobody, nobody remembers that. You do that this Monday. You do the cheap finish. He gets the record, and then the next match with Chad Gable, Chad beats him. But because you did that finish already, <laughs> that's the problem. Like you did this wrong. You should have done that finish this Monday. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then he would have been good. You could have gotten away with it. Uh-huh. But I think Chad, I think if anyone could beat him, it would be Chad. But now I don't think anymore. I originally thought that would be a thing, but I just don't think it's going to be a thing anymore. I, I don't think he's going to lose this belt until maybe at the earliest Survivor Series. At the earliest. What if, and I'm putting it as a big what if, they would want to put that belt on Logan Paul? Um, No. A big no. A hell no. Hell, hell no. Um, if they didn't do that with the money in the bank and they didn't do that with the U.S. title, they're not doing it. The Intercontinental Championship that had that Triple H loved so damn much because that's one of the most important belts of his career. That's not something that'll ever happen. I'm just being completely honest here. <laughs> also, Good. Mainly because it literally is one of the most important belts in Paul Levesque's career. And he's not going to ruin it by putting Logan Paul next to it. So Good. it's the kind of thing that's going to happen. <laughs> Good. So, all right, let's get to the card. Um. What's funny is you don't have an Intercontinental Championship match, but for some reason, and I don't know why, you could have done this show without this happening. We have a Grayson Wall effect with Cody Rhodes. I don't know why. I I cannot tell you why. <laughs> why happened? couldn't that be on Monday? Fuck Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, me. <laughs> I don't understand this. Like, why don't why why is this a thing? <laughs> why are they doing this? Well, I, I have a feeling they're probably going to do an impromptu match just because there's not a lot of matches on the card. Maybe. That's my guess. Maybe. I don't know. It's an interesting situation. So that's the thing happening. Um, let's get the matches that actually matter. LA Knight versus the Miz. I'm excited for this. I really am really excited for this match. Um, there's no way in LA Knight loses this match. There's no way in hell. Oh, hell no. You do this because hell no. you don't do this storyline. Remains is literally putting him down for four weeks and not have LA Knight win. <laughs> like, there's no way. Yeah, no. You want people to in the in the stadium to riot? Well, it's not a stadium, it's an arena. Come on. We're I in mean, Pittsburgh. We're in Pittsburgh. They don't riot. I mean, <laughs> this this guy has gotten so over that you know the catch rays. Whatever. I mean, people are just, you know, they they know when to say it, they know when not to say it, they know when yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and yeah, I, I don't see you taking a talent that has all this backing coming from the crowd and saying, Okay, that's it, we're you're done with it. No, I don't that's not gonna happen. Not Hell no. I mean, in Vince World, yes, but this is no longer Vince World. True. So uh, I I expect LA Knight to kick the shit out of the Miz. I don't. I think it's gonna be a match. I think it's gonna be a match, Sal. Yeah. Um. 
LA Knight because it's just too obvious. <laughs> makes too much sense. It just makes too much sense. <laughs> the, uh, I don't, Miz, I mean, for his skills on impersonating LA Knight. That was amazing. That was he hysterical. Was, you know, <laughs> he, he, he got everything almost spot on. And that's why I think he's more better as an actor than he is an opponent. Well, you're, you're going too far with that. But it was very funny. I'm watching Raw and the uh, music hits for LA Knight. And Manny pops up like, oh, shit, LA Knight. The crowd goes crazy. And all of a sudden, she realizes it's the Miz. She's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Gotcha. What a funny reaction. He's like, oh, fuck. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> it was such great. Um, by the way, did you realize the last time he did, the only the last couple people he did this impression for were John Cena and The Rock. So how how big of a deal is that? That he didn't do this very often to do the impressions like that, and the last two were the rock and see that. So, <laughs> so that, that tells you how the importance of this match is. All right, moving on. Um, the feud that never ends. Still cage match. Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. Please, this be over. I, I as much as I love these two, I'm so sick of this damn feud. Why couldn't we get home into SummerSlam? I don't know. Apparently, we're doing it. In, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it in SummerSlam. We couldn't do it in Canada. Let's go to Pittsburgh and do it in the steel cage. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> Becky wins. Sal. So. Yeah, Becky wins because I don't care. Exactly, I feel the same way. That Becky wins, but do we expect Trish to have another broken nose from this? I don't care. Hopefully, hopefully she takes a break from TV and gets and come back and like the rumble. Because you know damn well, I'm over it. I'm over it. She, she's not gonna bleed. Trish is not going to bleed. You don't know. But the, the way this shoot's been, Becky will punch her in the face and make her bleed on purpose. <laughs> the way this shoot's been. I, I have the strange feeling that uh, her her protege will probably pop up in a strange place. I don't care. Um, let's move on. <laughs> Undisputed. You can tell how over this feud I am. Undisputed <laughs> WWE World Tag Team Championship. It is a steel city street fight. Again, because we're in Pittsburgh and Kevin Owens said so. <laughs> Kevin Owens defending against the Judgment Day. The two people who don't seem to get along, Damien Priest and Finn Balor. Um, I'm not sure Sal, if you were up for this or not, but we, but mommy told them that if they don't win gold, there might be some issues. But they don't, they don't come back with some gold. There might be some changes in the Judgment Day. So that being yeah, said, I didn't see that. What you did see that? I didn't see that. I, I, I don't remember when that happened during the show because sometimes we're all blends together, so I lose track of when things happen. But that was really tired Monday night. Um, so is there is there a title change or not, Sal? So? I say yes, just to continue this infighting that's going on with the Judgment Day, and better to do it with you know tag team titles on their shoulders. Um, I, I'm leading to a title change mainly because I think Raw needs some single stars and Sammy and KO might be better as single stars right now. <laughs> Honestly, they need more people in the single division and like main eventers and have some more fun because they need them. But um, so Judgment Day wins these tag team titles and everyone has gold for like a day. That I say no. I say they retain, but the infighting still continues. And somewhere down the road, you have Finn Balor and JD McDonough go against Damian Priest and 30 down. Okay, I can see that happening. I can totally see that happening, actually. Yeah, I can see them getting to that before we get around to an Uso Uso match over on SmackDown. There you uh, go. <laughs> um, speaking of which, the only actual SmackDown match, because the only the, the only match that's actually being advertised currently with SmackDown, it is the United States Championship, Rey Mysterio taking on Austin Theory for some reason. Um, I don't know why. Um, there's no reason to take this belt off Rey right now because they're sitting up Rey versus Santos down the road. So, yeah. um, that so. With that being said, do you see Santos turning heel? I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn mainly because I, I can see that happening, but I could also see them doing like, with due respect, we have a match for the title, like we're supposed to have in the tournament, but that match never ended. Yeah, imagine the tournament never ended. So mm -hmm. why not here? Like, let's do this right and have an actual legitimate match. You can main event SmackDown with that. You can literally have a main event of SmackDown. If you're going to do this, end of October might be a great SmackDown for that. But oh, yeah. um, <laughs> the last the last SmackDown in October would be a great time for a Rey Mysterio Santos Explorer match. Just to throw oh. that out there. Um, anyway, that's also John Cena's last appearance. I know that just so happens to be. Um, but so Sal, coincidence. Sal, you with us with that? Uh -huh. Um, yeah. I mean, at this point, I mean, just let the uh, the dead beat dad keep it. There you go. 
<laughs> I was always blind to move on. <laughs> the women's world championship is his raw. Uh, mommy, Rhea Ripley taking our recovery. Um, yeah, we're trying again. Rhea Ripley defending against Rachel Rodriguez. You know, if this is a few months, if this is a couple of months from now, I totally see them taking the belt off Rhea. I just don't see it right now. I can see Raquel winning the belt eventually, but not today. Sal? Um, mommy's always on top. And um, Raquel is, yeah, maybe not now, but at some point. Exactly. I totally can see it, just not today. Um, that, no. Um, no, I see Raquel taking it, and since Rio doesn't have a belt, and they're still going to be infighting, she decides to walk away from everything because there's so much to test her own, she can't take it. So she walks away with no belt, and she basically drops the bomb and let the guys sort everything out. And you know how guys sort everything out. I, I just don't see that happening, mainly because of um the Dirty Dom Rhea thing. I just don't see that happening. Not right now. I don't. They're, I, they're I don't know popular. how much they're longer. You, I don't know how much longer you can keep that going. Another year, trust me, you can make this work. <laughs> don't know. I mean, Rhea, Rhea for sure does not need Dom at all. Oh, no, no, but Dom needs her. I think at this point, I mean, Dom needs her. So I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would think so because I, you know. If he were floundering on his own, would he be as popular? Well, he's not popular. He's hated, which is even more difficult <laughs> than being popular. I think it's actually more difficult to actually get real heel heat. I mean, we see what's going on in AEW. The only person in AEW to get that kind of heat is Callus. Nobody else gets heat. Dom gets heat. They're calling it Dom Mysterio heat right now. I mean, doing Dom heat right now. That, that's a crazy sentence. Well, <laughs> as HBK said to him as he was passing by, your dad should have spanked you more when you were little. <laughs> I'm the fanny. Oh, okay. there you go. Ah, oh, World Heavyweight Championship. It is Seth Rollins in a bad back taking on Shitsuke Nakamura, who apparently decided to be 20 years younger for some reason right now, which I'm loving. I'm not going to lie. It's just really funny that they're suddenly coming in. Finally realized this is how we should make Shitsuke Nakamura look great. Let him be a badass and kick people's ass and do promos in Japanese. Where the hell has this been for five years? Like, seriously, <laughs> where has this been? Because this is the shit game that I loved in NXT. Where the hell has this been? So, it, it, it's been under wraps because someone had control over shit that you shouldn't have just kind of filed away and forgot about. It's just so funny to me that finally, five years later, we're finally getting the real Shinsuke. Um, I think this match is going to be great. Um, Unfortunately, I don't see Shinsuke winning. I see Seth retaining. And I think if they didn't have the whole judgment, I think if the judgment day doesn't win the tag, I could totally see them doing something where Jud Dom Damian Priest catches in here and wins the belt because of Seth's back. I could totally see that happening. Yeah. I'm not, putting that, I'm not putting that in my official prediction, but I could totally see it happening. But I am going no, to that, that, that would That would be the greatest opportunity to do so at that time. Yeah, with the storyline back injury. I mean, that's yeah. perfect for money to make cash in. Sal, I see you pointing yeah. at the camera. Go. Um, so I was actually thinking about this, and I was saying Jin State's going to win by the skin of his teeth, and we're still going to have a cash in, and Damian Priest is going to walk out champion. Wow. And then we're going to have a little triangle feed with the three of them. That's interesting. I like that twist. They're the twist and a half I like. And Damian will be a double champ because I also said that I think that they're going to win the tag title. There you go. Dad, go ahead. You know. No, I. I kind of somewhat agree with, with Sal in respect, and I know that Damien's going to cash in the the case uh, for that particular time and moment. Um, and then he wins the belt, which leads to more of infighting and more conflict and more of pulling away. And that's why I can see a tag team being formed of J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor. And th then Damien's got to basically kind of say, well, I guess the only person I got left to give me support is Dirty Dom. Yeah. Yeah, but how fun would it be if he's tag team champs with Finn Balor, now he's world heavyweight champion via cash-in, and now he gets to really rub it into Finn Balor's face, and now you have tag team champions that absolutely hate each other. Which I, I think the the titles 
We'll go to Finn, but it's going to be Finn and JD McDonough. Interesting. That's an interesting twist to it. I mean, I could totally see something like that happening. I don't know. I or, just... yeah, or yeah. let's let's split the tag team titles finally, and then have Damian Priest and Finn Balor be SmackDown champions, and then Finn Balor and JD McDonough be Raw tag team champions. <laughs> yes. How about that? Wait, 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 you're just calling Judgment Day gold. You know, it's funny. Yeah. I can totally see them doing something along the lines of they have two belts now, so the Judgment Day is like, fine, um, Damien and da- they use the Freebird rule, or Damien and like Dominic are champions, and then they get, they, they're like, fine, Finn, take your belts and go have Damien and Dominic go over to SmackDown. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that happening. That's amazing. Yes, and then, we, and then we finally split the goddamn titles. Oh my god, that's an amazing idea. <laughs> or, 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 or you 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 have Damien win the, the belt from Seth, but Finn's carrying it for Damien. Oh my god, I'm sorry, but no, I don't know now. What is it, Christian so Cage? Oh my god, all right. Um, we have, oh, our, guest for, we have our guest waiting for us in the waiting room. So let me hit this button right here. And while I'm waiting for him to come in, we will hit his music. When are you gonna come down? When are you going to marry? I should have stayed on the phone. I should have listened to my own mouth. You never know. I didn't sign up for you. I'm not afraid for your friends to open. This boy's too young to be listening. Well, let's bring on. For the second week in a row, and I don't remember the last time we had back back week with the same guests that don't live in this house. So, what's been about it from that minute? Our friend John Parker. John, welcome back to the show. Hey, hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, two, I don't think I've ever done two weeks in a row, have I? That's new to me. No, I don't think so. I don't think you have either. I don't think anyone <laughs> has. I think Nan is the only one that ever had that. I don't count that because she lives. She was, it was during a pandemic and she was on every week. It was a that, that's, that's cheating. <laughs> I doesn't count here. I doesn't, I doesn't live in this house. That's why I said maybe, it that way. Maybe we're going to have John set a record. Oh, my, I yeah. think I have to look it up, but I think this is the first time he has someone on back, back week. Like so, the Triple H era strikes again. <laughs> you love it oh man so welcome back john how you doing thank you for having me i'm doing wonderful so well we just got finished talking about payback but it means that means we have to do our next of three memorials today so this news broke literally as we were going off the air last week. We actually put the video up on our Instagram page, and Mandy broke this news to us as we were going off, so we didn't really have a chance to discuss it. But I um, you lost Terry Funk, age seventy nine. Yeah. Literally as we were doing the show last Wednesday. Um, this music, by the way, is on um, Road to Tech. This is WWE theme by Jim Johnson. Yep, wonderful. Why not? Right? Why not bring this one out? I I was like, I need to find a theme song. I'm I'm with many theme songs. I'm like, this might be the best one. It's WWE related, and there you go. And um, eight seventy nine. Before I go to Dad, who probably has the entire biography in his brain, um, <laughs> oh, thoughts on Terry Funk? <laughs> um, I mean, I remember watching him not too much when I was younger, um, but I have seen some crazy stuff that he did, and um, yeah, I mean, it was. <laughs> He was a crazy bastard, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's funny is I, I was recently re-watching, so I didn't see some for background noise. So I popped on the old um, ECW, Rise of Qualities, WDVD on Peacock, just randomly, just because I needed something for background noise. And they were talking about Terry Funk being the reason ECW is ECW. <laughs> and then they started showing the Burial Eagle match. I'm like, wow, this is so crazy to watch this. <laughs> so um, yeah. Terry Funk is a legend, absolute legend. And not even just a hardcore legend. He was a wrestler, like a big-time wrestler before that. But he's also mm-hmm. the man that we always joke about, retiring, retiring, retiring. Like, there was actually a joke that um, 
Are we sure he's dead and he just did, decided to go another retirement and we back like a week? Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> are we sure about this? You're being worked. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the la- funny part is the last match that I re- that I could have on my head was that ECW one night stand match where he was tagging with um with the Tommy Dreamer and Beulah versus like Edge and Mick Foley and Lita. And he said, everyone I stand. And that match was fucking crazy. That was a ridiculous <laughs> fucking match. But I can't say I've ever seen him in person. But those are the matches that I think of automatically when I think of Terry Funk. John? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i kind of similar. I didn't sort of grow up watching him loads. I kind of got into him after the fact because I was like a fan of wrestlers who referenced him and things like that. So I, I after the fact, went back and watched a lot of uh uh, as Sal said, crazy, crazy stuff. I didn't see a lot of his like <laughs> wrestling, wrestling. I saw most of the, you know, the hardcore kind of, kind of thing. Yes. And, oh boy, nobody's, uh, nobody's come close to that. Even John Moxley. <laughs> <laughs> and his best <laughs> efforts. In his best efforts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he can try, yes. and I love you, John, but you, you can't beat Terry Funk. I had to say um, something though. So on Friday they did a tribute match, right? It was, it was a hardcore tribute match for good Terry Funk. It wasn't very good. But on freaking Tuesday, on the next this week. Um, one of the um, one of the Diamond Mind, um, one of the Creed brothers did the Terry Funk ladder spot with a steel cage door, and I'm like, this oh. might be the craziest dream I've ever seen. Okay, <laughs> that is I've cool. All week. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> so I see that. Well, you mean uh, what Bruce did? Bruce, thank you, Bruce. I couldn't think of what it was, but like, it was. I was like, what am I seeing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Back to you. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I thought you. I, I didn't sorry, think yeah. you said my name. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I said sorry, John. Did anybody else say before I said that? <laughs> Misunderstood. Um, yeah. No. I. Uh, I. I am gonna. I'm gonna miss him. He seemed like a really cool guy. Had great matches. Yes. Uh, but you know what? He had a night. He, from what I know, anyway, he seemed to have a, a good life. Um, as much as you can in this world. And at 79, so, like at 79, that's a, that's a long life, especially in the wrestling business. That's exactly. A it's a bit different to, um, I mean, I've only just joined a bit into this episode. It's, pro- it's a bit different to someone else you've probably talked about already. Um, we actually haven't yet. We're getting there. We haven't? haven't? Oh, that's why I didn't want wow. to say that. We talked about Bob Barker. Yeah, Bob Barker first. <laughs> and Another we're all legends. Yeah, we're, we will be saving that for the end because I didn't think anything can follow it. We're saving that for the end. <laughs> Not that there's ever a good time to go, but, you know. Um, at least... Although I feel like we just went oldest to youngest, too, as the memorial. I didn't realize that. I didn't even think about You've that. done it when deliberately. I it. When I wrote it, <laughs> I didn't even think about that until I just said it. Well, no, we'll get to that later. Um, Dad, Terry Funk, go. What can I say? Uh, worked uh, in his dad's territory. Dad was promoter, Dory Funk Sr., he and his brother, Dory Funk Jr., uh, helped the promotion, held titles in there, uh, went on to other territories. Uh, uh, Terry's wrestled, if I remember correctly, uh, not only in his territory, but also a little bit in Memphis and Mid-South. Made a couple appearances in Midwest. Uh, wrestled in New Japan for some extreme matches. Then uh, ECW. And then uh, with Vince and the split between uh, ECW and WWE and work with WCW. Um, he was started out as a wrestling technician and won the NWA belt. And then later on, kind of they made him into this hardcore legend that he everyone remembers him to be. And I never forget him coming in with his cowboy hat and a serape, and he's got his Brandon Iron. Mm-hmm. And there's only a couple times I've seen that Brandon Iron lit with fire, and he wanted <laughs> to basically brand his opponent. Uh, the weirdest match I've seen him in is WCW with Ric Flair, and he had this like weapons everywhere match. And of course, Funk has got his branding iron by his side, but then. He finds a plastic bag and puts it over Ric Flair's head, <laughs> puts a little duct tape on it, and here Flair's, you know, running around trying to get air, trying to tear it. He's not able to tear it correctly. Finally, he finds something and tears it, and all of a sudden turns around, and he gets a Brandon iron in his head for his troubles. Ooh. You know, and <sighs> the ladder shot, I'm <laughs> telling you, the ladder gimmick 
it works for him because he's that damn crazy and out of control. So the latter works for him, and he used it, God knows, way after even he wasn't wrestling on TV anymore, or independent, still used it, and, and it works. And that's another thing that people remember him for. Um, he's been in, in movies, two, which I can tell you, one is over the top with Sylvester Stallone, he was arm wrestler, and the other one, Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse, so he'll be immortalized in cult movies for that. And a little known fact, when uh, Sylvester Stallone did Rocky V, and then you had Rocky Balboa fighting Sporters Ray in the street, Terry Funk choreographed that entire scene. Wow, I didn't know that. Cool. I did not know that. <laughs> so, did, they, did they just think we need someone who gets this kind of hardcore fighting? Right. I, I, there have been reports that basically he suffered dementia, but I don't know if that's ever been actually confirmed. But in real life, he did purchase a ranch with his wife. Yeah, and it was called the Double Cross Ranch, but they sold it. But he, he, he'll be remembered mostly as a hardcore legend more than anything else. Yeah, uh, that's that. We said we definitely had to talk about it, but let's move on. We have some. I'm gonna jump over to AEW because we do have a lot of stuff from AEW this past week. Uh-huh. All right. Um, you know, I'm gonna save this first story for a second because that's gonna take a longer conversation. Tony Khan announced during his post pay per view scrum the following pay per view announcements that do affect this show. First of all, next year they're doing all in in Webley again. Hey. Scott, you going? How are you going this time? <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I'm. I might go even if I've got no one to come with me. In Fair fact, enough. because I found out a couple of people I kind of they're acquaintances, not friends. They went, and it's like, oh well, if we were closer friends, I would have gone with you. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm gonna. I'm gonna befriend them. And we're gonna go. <laughs> you have a year. You have a year to get this figured out. Twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. Now this is where things get interesting. So, um, so they were talking about. They were talking about Max and how uh, Max is actually going to start doing live streams soon. Very soon in September, they're testing, they're doing live streaming. So, um, part of the next deal, they're trying to get on Max. But here's the problem: that's not announced yet. <laughs> Tony's trying. He, he. I have to give Tony Khan all the credit of the world because he is amazing at smoothing. He's trying his so damn best. Because the um, I can't remember the guy's name over at Max that everybody right now on the Actors Guild and the Writers Guild despises and hating and striking against. And Tony Khan's like praising him up and down. He's <laughs> <laughs> contract. And then he's like, Max is my favorite streaming service in the world. Like, I am cracking <laughs> up at Tony Contract and damn it, this contract. <laughs> but, he can't uh, say anything negative. He's, oh, in, I, he's in a bad position. <laughs> I know, but I made me laugh so hard when I read that article. Like, That's very funny. But um, I can see him not blinking and saying that. Um, anyway... <laughs> Um, I did get to watch the uh, press scrum this time. By the way, press scrum is a lot of fun, because I never get to watch it live. It's really odd, like, like at midnight, by the time it happens. And the fact that the show was on in the afternoon, I could actually watch the whole thing live, so that was fun. <laughs> For a change of pace. But um, anyway, the other announcements. Um, first, first of all, um, they're doing another hate review in October. That uh, caught me off guard. I wasn't this expecting this that. This surprised me. October 1st, um, because... Apparently, they're doing it on Saturday. They're doing it on a Sunday because the um, Jaguars, he said, you'll never go up against the Jaguars game. But the Jaguars are going to be in London doing a morning game for us. So oh. that means the nighttime is available. So he will be doing AEW. It sounds like New Japan. New Japan's going to be involved. And it's called Wrestle Dream in Seattle. And um, it is a show dedicated to Antonio Minoki, who will have passed officially one year then. I have zero problem with the hate review. I said, this is a fucking pay per view on the schedule. <laughs> God damn it. It's, was... Yeah, it's a shock. I'll, I'll tell you what, as well. I like the name because it's, oh, it's, it's kind of corny, but it sounds <laughs> Japanese. Yeah. Like that sounds like name. something New Japan would call an event, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a great name. I mean, and the other announcement he made officially was um, Full Gear is going to be at, in um, Los Angeles at the Kia Forum. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. So those are the two big announcements that came out in the paper. So I'm like, why are that real? Why are we doing another damn paper? Can we do it? Like a TV? Couldn't they just make this like a special, like, make a special little collision? Like, yeah. dedicate it to fucking the Nuggets. It might be the highest rate of collision episode if you did that. <laughs> yeah, he's going to that. It would be great. I mean, is maybe, it, is maybe it... it's something to do with New Japan. Maybe they're like, no, no, no. We, we need to make a lot of money here. Yeah. Is he trying to copy what Vince used to do? I, I think the problem is, okay, here's the problem. 
and back in the Attitude Era, we had obviously had all the pay-per-views, WWF, and everyone was buying all the shows. We're not in that era anymore. WWE has spoiled all of us. Spoiled everybody with the <laughs> WWE Network and now Peacock, where we don't pay anything for these damn shows anymore. Like, it's so yeah. damn cheap. <laughs> and, like, I'm not, well, at most, we're paying 10 bucks a month, maybe less, depending on those Sal's cheapskate. He watches commercials still, and, like, <laughs> stuff like that. And like it, it spoiled everybody, and now it's like fifty bucks, like fifty bucks two weeks in a row right now, and then throw another fifty bucks in October, and they better get on Max. I'm getting so sick of that. I'm spending so much damn money. Well, <laughs> even though over here these shows cost a, uh, about half, uh, essentially they're they're twenty pounds each, which is like that's like twenty five dollars, I think. Even that though, it's still too expensive to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Right. God damn it. <laughs> I would talk to the news everyone's talking about. I just got an alert on my phone from um, Wade Keller that he's put up a special color hotline talking about this story. Literally, I just got an alert as I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I just got an alert. Um, anyway, so CM Punk. Shocker. We're oh. talking about CM Punk. What a shock. <laughs> okay, Sal, Sal, when I finish this story, I'm going to tell you something that's going to shock you and it shocked Mandy yesterday when we were talking about this last night. Okay. CM Punk. CM Punk. And Jack Perry got into an altercation right before All In went on the air. Uh, Jack Perry was in the last match on Zero One, and he pretty much looked into the camera and said, um, that's real glass. Um, I forgot the whole line, but he was talk- calling out Punk. And um, with Punk gave him shit for wanting to use real glass instead of sugar glass at Collision. And he told him, "This isn't we don't do that on Collision. You go over to Dynamite if you want to use real glass. He actually said those words. That was pretty funny to me. I'm not going to lie. And uh, I definitely agree with Punk on that. I do agree with him on that. Don't use real glass. Because that will hurt. Like, legitimately, I agree with him. But anyway, um, Jack Perry said that, and then apparently he le- he got into Punk's face right before Punk came out, and they got into a fight. <laughs> um, and apparently Miro tried to calm Punk down, and Miro also got yelled at by Punk. And then apparently Tony Khan tried to calm Punk down, and Tony Khan got yelled at by Punk. Um, and um, he pretty much told him, "I'm quitting." And then Samoa Joe was able to calm him down to walk out for their match. Um. <laughs> Sports Illustrated um, announced uh, is reporting that Punk and Perry are currently suspended pending investigation, meaning 99% chance we're not seeing Punk at all out this weekend, which <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did, and Mandy said it sucked for the fans that paid to see him. And it really sucked for the fans that paid money to see CM Punk um, oh, well. on Saturday and Sunday. But because um, Sunday's at the United Center, which if they're just in the now arena, that's one thing, but they're in the United Center. Like, oh my God. I can't. Mm-hmm. So Punk fucked everybody over on this one. Um, now, <laughs> We've been talking about this for months. Okay, about a year now. We've been talking about this. I'm done. I'm done. I can't. I've been done. I can't. Like, I've I been tried. Done. I tried this time around. I really did try. I'm done. I can't do this unless anymore. this is unless this is some extreme elaborate storyline. And I'm hearing it's not. That, <laughs> I'm hearing that, it. that we're just all just eating up like the sheep that we are. And Jack the, Perry the problem his with heel that, turn very seriously. For it to be a storyline, it's got to be interesting. This is all of us are saying this is an interesting, right? We're like, I, no, I, we're done. I can't do it anymore. Like, I can't well, do. I can't spend all this time stressing about what the fuck CM Punk's gonna do next. Like, I can't do it anymore. Like, I'm so. <laughs> I wish you were a fucking wrestling podcast. I can't do it anymore. Like, I'm so done. <laughs> Just to refresh everyone's memory, isn't this the third incident that Punk's been involved in? Um. They had the brawl out last year. And then um, I believe he um, also, I believe he had Christopher Daniels thrown out from backstage. Uh, <laughs> Brian Evans got thrown out. Well, Christopher Daniels, the head of the but he got thrown out of collision, which is hysterical to me. Um, <laughs> Brian Evans got thrown out of a show for calling him out on freaking BTE. Um, Hangman Page wasn't allowed in the building. Um, he didn't, he talked shit about Hangman Page, but then he apologized for that. He did apologize for that. Um, yeah, this is Punk. As Mandy said, it isn't the whole slow. Isn't the whole thing that if if someone's an, if like your if your friend's an asshole and people you work with an asshole, maybe you're the asshole. Maybe you're just yeah. the asshole, CM Punk. You're in your fucking late forties. Stop acting like a fucking asshole. Like, come on now. <laughs> Here, here's something that maybe Mr. Punk should remember, and when he was back with WWE, and he had his issues in. And he did this promo on how basically there was people backstage pipe bomb. Pipe bomb. Pipe bomb. that um yeah that were the cancer and he's trying to kill the cancer. Well, here's the thing. Now let's fast forward. Who's the cancer punk? 
Are you the cancer? I mean, because here's the thing. This is the third reported incident, and it seems to be a recurring thing. And you haven't changed. You apologize, but your apologies aren't genuine because yeah. later on, you basically go against what you apologize for. So here's the thing. If you're stirring up all this stuff, and then you're mentioning it's Yellow Talon's fault, why don't you look in the mirror and say, okay, maybe it's my fault, and I should take full responsibility for how I act, which is really immature and imbecile. And guess what? I don't care if it's Discovery or whatever, and he builds collision around Punk. Here's the thing. If he doesn't go, other talent will. And yes. what do you have left? What's funny about it is everyone's, everyone's like, don't forget Jack Perry. He got in his face. Jack Perry is in his 20s. I'm sorry. He's a kid at the end of the day. At the end of the day, he's in his 20s. Fucking Punk's twice his age. Yeah. Punk's got to be the bigger man here. Especially in front of the biggest audience you're, you've been in since maybe at WrestleMania, for Punk's sake. The biggest audience this company's ever seen and maybe ever see. And you're the fucking story because you're an idiot. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, oh. It's crazy. Like, I've, a lot of people online, I've been saying that. Like, oh, yeah, but Jack Jack Perry, Jack Perry. And it's like, yeah, okay, well, you have a good point. He's young. And also, like, I agree with you. You know, using real glasses, not the best idea. I remember vividly seeing what happened to Goldberg when he yeah, punched the window. Comes to mind. First thing that comes to mind. <laughs> like, yeah. But at the end of the day, I think the problem boils down to CM Punk thinking he can tell people what to do when there's supposed to be a team of people like you know this should be going through doctors and tony and I can see oh, giving you know, advice. the head of the I talent can see giving you know. advice i could totally see giving advice 100 percent. but advice the way is sounded fine. like telling him no even though you're not yeah. in charge you're definitely not in charge <laughs> that's the problem and that's why in a weird way i don't i don't care that jack did it you know because screw him who who are you you're you're meant to be colleagues he's not your superior and I, I said that to someone and they said to me oh yeah yeah but um punk has been given power to you know try and help run collisions like well there's your problem he shouldn't have that power especially when you know he annoys people <laughs> or he gets easily annoyed or he gets yeah. easily annoyed like you know it's funny i did a promo during all in and it was the um, ftr and um i think it was cash He's like, I don't know. I the cash or dash. I forgot which one it was. They say I always hold grudges, and I, I think Keller did this dry joke in his review. He's like, oh, I see why they get along. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, that's funny. <laughs> uh, here's here's what Tony should do: is strap a pair on, basically give him a bag colored red. Tell him, okay, open the bag, takes it out, and it's the world, the real world heavyweight championship belt with his ex. And basically said, you know what the ex is for? Because you're no longer working in this company. The ex <laughs> means out, wow. gone, strike, uh, go, hit the, road, hit the bricks. I don't care what people in Discovery and everyone else says. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I shouldn't have to put up with this anymore. And the rest of the company shouldn't have to put up with this anymore. You're making my company look bad. You're taking me down. And before I lose any more money, I'm going to lose you. Top guy, gone. Yes. You're 100% right. Because he, what, when you said earlier, like, other people are going to go. They are going to go. They're going to get sick of it. And then, you know, oh, great, you've got CM Punk. But no, there's no one for him to wrestle. <laughs> What's funny is, like, I, I, um, Sal, you watch Closure on Saturday. Yes. Yes. Sal, you watch Closure on Saturday. It's the first time you actually watch Closure live. That is a boring ass show because of hey, we have to have people on the show that get along with punk. There's like eight people that get along with punk. <laughs> yeah, two hour show. Like it was one thing we did like a 57 minute match with like it's like Bullet Club Gold and FTR. Like that was amazing. Like that was an incredible yeah. match. You can't do that every week. You can't do that every no. week. And when there's like eight people on your damn roster, like you can't do much. Of anything, so I'm actually thinking you get rid of Punk. Those might be a better show because then you can just tie everything in from Dynamite and actually make it a better show. <laughs> you I agree. Know? Well, I totally agree. And you know what? I don't care if it's Punk's show. The reason I watch it is Bullet Club Gold. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's what I'm all about. I just want to see Juice being weird, oh, reincarnated Macho Man. You know. <laughs> Any reason to give me that? If you gave me that one. I'm gonna take it every time. <laughs> <laughs> so the Punk Samoa Joe match. Started out good, but it didn't end up that way. 
All right, so these are what we're going to do. We're going to go on all in, and we're going to treat this like a WrestleMania. We're not going to go through everything with Solitary Match. We're going to be here all fucking day, and we still have other things to do. So we're going to treat this like a WrestleMania. We're going to do like we did this past year's WrestleMania, where we did the highlights, the lowlights, and then we got out of here. So that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, can I just comment on how awesome Wembley looked on TV? Like, hey. oh my yeah. Oh, look amazing! Like I don't watch a lot of stuff from Wembley Stadium, like, but I know how big a deal of it is. And from the fucking pre-show on, that place looked amazing. Like, holy hell! And they went all out with the pyro. They got rights to music. They did amazing all night. And the actually, you know what I was up for? And um, and Sal didn't. Sal was Sal was at work, and he had the show muted for a little while, and he missed. And they paid for the rights for fucking Bush. The play to do the <laughs> anthem of the show. I did not see that one coming. And like Mandy looks at me like, does Sal hear that yet? Does Sal hear that yet? <laughs> and I'm my waiting, favorite bands. But I'm like waiting for Sal to text me that he heard it and he didn't hear it because it was muted because he was at work dealing with something. And I'm like, damn, damn, the one time that I really want Sal to react to something live, he's busy. Like, damn it, <laughs> one time. Uh, but, I don't um, know what the... no, hey, there you go. There, there it is. There it is. But um, no, I was like, ah. But um, so. Overall, ah. phenomenal the set and the pyro and they're in the drone shots and the new camera angles that like everything they did for the show made it feel so fucking important and so fucking special. I don't know what the budget was for fireworks and pyro, but man, it was through the roof. You know Literally. What? If you're gonna spend money, you do it here. You do it on a show yes. like this. That's so important. It's like yeah. mania. They always go off full off mania. They this is their and I think if they're gonna do this every year, this is their mania. You make all in your mania. Yeah, it, it really means if they're going to do all in now, then they got to get rid of all out because it's so stupid. That I agree with. I agree with that sentiment one hundred percent. Or move it to another time of the year. Don't do it. Back that's the, the that's it. Make them like bookends, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, like, but like, if all in, make all in your WrestleMania. All right. Because, like I said, the name already means a lot to people anyway. Like, the name means so much to people. And then you did this show, and it was so special. Um, any other thoughts on the set and everything, Sal? I loved it. I thought the set was great. It was perfect. It wasn't uh, over the top. I didn't block too many seats to kind of, you know, keep the capacity up. Uh, but it was a set. It wasn't like what fucking WWE does where it's just, you know, you hated that big three backlash. screens around a fucking entrance, you know? What's funny, you hated that backlash and everyone loved it. Like, everyone loved <laughs> it. <laughs> you were such a minority on that set of backlash. Everyone <laughs> <I> loved it. <laughs> Oh man, that's amazing, John. Any other thoughts on the set and everything else? Yeah, I'm the same. I really, really liked how it looked because it, it felt huge, but it still looked like AEW. It wasn't, it wasn't WWE light. Or know, even like even like Wrestle Kingdom. It wasn't like Wrestle Kingdom either. It was their own yeah. environment, and that was really cool. It came across, uh, you know, great. I thought, and uh, Wembley always looks cool, especially in the day. I like it before the you know the before the nighttime comes in and it's in the day and I don't know that's just Does how that I roof close. Uh, oh, that's a good question. I don't actually know with the new Wembley because this is this isn't it's called Wembley, but it's not the old Wembley. It's a totally yeah, different. It's like Yankee Stadium. It's like Yankee Stadium. <laughs> yeah, so I actually don't know if it closes. I don't think it does. Oh, uh, don't quote me on that though. But what's interesting, what I like, I, what I've always said, I said this during Mania, and I actually like it during like, the last couple of Summer Slams. I love it when the show starts in the day and you can watch the sun go down during the show. Like, yeah. I love that stuff. I, and Sal knows it. I love that stuff so much. Like, it's, it's one of so my favorite cool. things during Mania. And the fact that they got to do that during this is even cooler. So, that any other thoughts on it before we actually talk about the show itself? Mm -hmm. No, it, it, everything looks so phenomenal. I mean, it was, was nicely done. The camera work, location how you had your set everything and you know where you had the the table for the announce team was it was great uh and seeing how everything looked you just kept your fingers crossed that the matches were gonna basically showcase the place they were in and it did and then so so okay i'm about to actually start worst match of the night for me and the worst match of the night by far and i hate to say it i really do hate to say it with the women's match I didn't like it. I thought it was not that good. And I think you could have done more than just a four-way match. I understand. Like, was it a four-way match? The pros all in. That's because they only had, like, five women there. And, like, there's, like, eight women there. And four of them are hurt. That's the only reason they did a four-way all in. People forget that. Like, the only reason they only had one women's match all in is because you have the independent women available at the time are hurt. Or, you know what I mean? That's the only reason. True. But, like, um, 
I, I, I was disappointed by this match. I didn't like the finish. I didn't like the story of one. I understand why they did it. I understand we're in England. You have Soraya in in front of her family. You have the whole you were Rocky entrance, blah, 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 blah. I, <laughs> I hated it so much. Like, I did not like any of it. I was disappointed when it was over. I hated the finish. It wasn't a good match. It was only 10 minutes. It was only 10 minutes. You only give 10 minutes to your women on your biggest show in the world and biggest show ever. That That's, was a problem to me. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I'm John. Worst match of the night. Mm-hmm. Worst, oh, it's hard for me to choose the worst match because I'll be honest, I, I enjoyed. All of it. Are we including the zero hour? Sure, go right ahead. Include the zero hour. Because <laughs> I hate to say this, but because I, I like the women's match. Um, so I'm going to say I thought that all of these p- people deserve better. Aussie Open defending against MJF Madam Cole. That felt like that was even less than 10 minutes. That was like, that seemed like a blink of an eye just to get it out of the way. <laughs> Well, again, it felt like remember, they weren't really defending. It was just like, we need to get the belts onto these guys. Come on. Yeah, well, again, you got to remember that show, they hadn't been that short because, in fact, you know, they're in the main event. We shouldn't have booked that match to begin with. <laughs> well, have... Exactly. That's the thing. Like, it didn't it didn't end up coming to anything later in the night. So it's a bit like, oh, okay. Well, if I was Aussie Open, I'd be a bit annoyed. <laughs> well, to answer your question, the match was 745. There you go. See, it felt, <laughs> it felt less than that. <laughs> I looked it up. It was the shortest match on the card. Which, like, again, I get wonderful. because they need to, you know, save themselves for later. So don't do it then. <laughs> yeah, the women's match, by the way, was eight fifty. It was actually shorter than I thought. It was Whoa. actually shorter than I thought it was. Holy crap! Shorter than ten minutes. That sucks. Well, they just go the entrances. It was ten minutes. If you include like the real Rocky entrance and whatever the hell they were doing with Tony Storm, <laughs> whatever that was. And so, like, yeah, under ten minutes for the for the only women's match on the show. Oh yeah, yeah. Sal, uh, worst match, worst moment. Win- yeah, the, the, the women's match had the potential to really steal the show but the setup for it just didn't work for me it felt rushed it felt like it was just thrown together like oh shit we don't have any women's matches let's just put four random you know let's put these four together and whatever I have a mini and... tournament where the champion has to win to get into his, her own defense yeah it's just uh, it was, <laughs> the whole thing the whole setup of that thing i mean it had the, like i said it had the potential of being a show stealer and it, it just it fell flat on so many levels yeah do you following up on this or got anything else you want to bring up here it's hard to be in between the woman's match and the zero hour i mean horse apiece. My whole thing is I thought that when Surya brought her family, to me, that just showed it, it's too predictable. You know who's going to end up winning the belt. Good point, actually. I didn't think about that at all. My, my think thing is, did you really need Ruby Soho to interject? Kind of. But even then, she's like the only woman's message out for all out. We'll get to that in a few minutes. So <laughs> after this thing, I don't expect the outcast to be the outcast anymore. No. By the way, I do laugh at Soraya at the post scrum. She's like, yeah, I'm really, I, I'm being really nice here. But when I get back to the States, I'm going to have to hate you all again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, that made me laugh. That would make yeah. me chuckle. <laughs> well, you know what made me laugh? When Soraya was more page-like at the press conference. Like, that was the most relaxed I've ever seen her, ever. With the yeah. post after the show, like I've never seen her so relaxed. <laughs> See, I'm I'm upset though because I am one of the few people who seems to really love the outcasts, but there's no, they can't be the outcasts now. Tony's at the very least, right. Tony's gone from the group, right? Hmm. I maybe maybe I Ruby's so. sticking around. Maybe that's why she came out, like to Try remind to you. Oh yeah, she's gonna. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. All right. Um, entry to the night. This is tough because they had a lot of great entrances. I thought this show was very WrestleMania like where they had some amazing entrances and they went up full out. Like, I'm not gonna lie, when when the House of Black brought out the fucking lantern, I'm like, God damn it, you guys. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Why'd you do that? But no, um, I think for me, and I think dad's gonna probably agree with me with Sting and Darby. When I heard she, when I heard she could destroy it, I'm like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I believe they got this music and they did this entrance. My favorite part was I don't know if people caught this Justin Roberts, where he's like um, that is Darby Allen, and this is Sting. I'm like, really? You had to say that is Darby Allen? You really had to say that? <laughs> well, he's done that a couple of times, I, I think. I'm sure I've heard him say it, and it's a bit, oh, he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I never caught it before, but that made me chuckle. But no, that, I, that had the history record destroyed. That was an absolutely big surprise. I did not expect it. Really awesome moment. Um, Sal, entrance of the night. 
No, I, I was just going to say that too. I agree. I think it's the Sting and Darby Allen entrance. Uh, that was another moment where I was just on the phone for the many hours I was on the phone. Of course, the one Sunday in like four years that I worked was a complete shit show. And I'm on the phone for like four or five hours out of the whole day. I was on the phone during that, but I actually had the volume on like pretty low. And it kind of caught me off guard. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like Darby Allen's theme. And that doesn't sound like Sting's theme. So I muted the phone really quick while, you know, he's yapping away doing something. Oh, I just gave a thumbs up apparently. And I turned the volume up. And I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, and I, if I remember correctly, I think Sting at one point in his very early WCW career walked out to that theme. Mm hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think I would know being a super fan of Sting, but I yeah. remember him vaguely doing that at the beginning of his career. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I remember someone said that on a review. That, yeah. that was his old entrance. That was his old entrance music. And of course, Tony's going to pay for anything to make it look good. So, But the funny part about it is, so Sting was funny. You have Sting being Sting, and then he turns into Joker Sting, and then he brings out his WCW theme music. <laughs> no reason. <laughs> no sense when you put it that way, right? <laughs> Why not? But I kind of liked it when he came out the entrance, and on one side you had Darby Allen, and on the other side you had Sting. That was cool. That was awesome. Well, I mean, it, cool. it was is right there, and it's all out. Like, it would allow. Like, yeah, it was. It was great, you know. And the match was okay. And man, that poor coffin. I don't know how they're able to close <laughs> it. So many dings and dents. I mean, is there going to be like a used coffin sale or something down the road? Uh, <laughs> in the build up to it, I kept seeing people online going, Oh, you know what? Edge is going to be in the coffin. He's going to pop out what? of the coffin and debut. Uh, and it's like, it's No, no. Fire until September. It's kind of like fire until September. Like, that's one part that like, everyone doesn't understand. Edge's contract doesn't expire in the middle of September. Like, yeah. He was not showing up at all. In. <laughs> that wasn't happening. What, were they expecting an Uso to pop out of it or something? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought Nick, I, I thought it would have been creepy as fucking hell if Dick Ray was hiding in the coffin. <laughs> yeah, that would work. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I think uh, with Sting, like in the past, I was always torn on Joker Sting. I thought it's a bit lazy. It's a bit lazy. But I don't know. This time, I think it's come at the right moment because he could have started getting a bit stale. Like, oh, yeah, we've seen Sting. We know he can still go, blah, blah, blah. But now it's like, oh, I'm going to mix it up just when I need to. And now he, he's got a bit more uh va va voom you know? oh, <laughs> oh, yes. that's a word <laughs> yes. Je ne sais quoi. I, I think i think the word the word jen, i think the word jen is looking for is huspa yeah there you go no, john has i gotta figure out how to spell huspa <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right um i guess we're out to one thing um Jericho trying to sing his theme music to the ring might have been one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> it wasn't great, was it? it? wasn't great. Uh... No, it was not. Like I thought it was going to be better than it was, but that was not good. That was not good. But I was, there, I was watching Sammy Guevara in the background trying not to laugh at it. It was even funnier. It, was even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me because I know he's not the best singer ever. But he's all right, you know. From that performance, though, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe like his in ear monitors weren't working or something. There was there was something going on there. He was worse than usual. Oh, okay. Is that why he held out the mic so the audience can do the song better? Well, that was supposed to be what the whole point of the song is. The song that the crowd sings along. I I did I did appreciate the Freddie Mercury um ale thing at the beginning. I did appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Ayo, I did, I did, but um, no, I I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> um. Last thing question here, biggest surprise of the night, would it be a finish or be an appearance like Mercedes Monet happened to be up there and then for some reason didn't show yeah. the women's match, which made no sense to me. I don't understand why you didn't do that. <laughs> but, um, um I think I would say this for me, the biggest surprise in the night may have actually been the finish of the freaking um um the freaking um elite match. I did not expect yeah. Takeshi to pin Omega. Like, I didn't expect that at all. Like, at no level that I figured Takeshi would be bidding Omega at Wembley Stadium. Like, no way. Oh, exactly the same. Exactly. I thought like, that was the whole reason hanging him within the match. Like, to get pinned. I got the whole reason. Like, I thought the, elite, I thought the uh, elite were winning that one. I was just like, what the hell? It, like, really caught me off guard. Most of the others, I thought, yeah, yeah, that's obvious. You know, like. Uh, the acclaimed winning. I'm like, yeah, yeah, because Billy needs to have a, a send off, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But this was just like, what the fuck? It's your biggest show ever. And you're going to make Kenny Omega lose. 
not a bad thing, just a shock. <laughs> well, it really builds the Kafka up, you know what I mean? Like it, we'll get to really him solidifying him. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to him in a few minutes. Um, so other than the Kafka beating Omega, any other big surprises for you on the evening? I I was saying C Mercedes Monet. Yes, I'll give you that. Because <laughs> I, I mean that was out of left field. I mean I that was nowhere on anyone's radar that she was going to be sitting in the crowd nonetheless. You know what I mean? I, I pretty pretty I saw pictures that she posted up in London. Oh look, maybe she's just back and hanging out. I didn't think at any all we're going to see her on screen. Like, there's no way. Right. That. <laughs> so that's a good that's a good call. Um, that and is, she was wearing a big giant boot on her on her. Yeah, she still. Too, so. uh, Tony kind of dressed that on the press scrum that she is not cleared. Yeah. At all. Like at any level, she ain't clear. But they they are talking to her, so there is a good chance. I don't trust them at all, bringing her in right now with the women's division being in the shambles that it is. But <laughs> I don't trust them whatsoever. But that's a word going around that he does want to talk to her. Obviously, I can't really blame him for that. Um, Dad, anything else? Biggest surprise finish. The stadium oh, stampede. The stadium stampede, and I didn't expect it. White Van comes in, ah, yeah. and what was it? Was it Tony Schiavone's thing? It's, it's so so cool. Cool. <laughs> and, and, and she has an English driver's license. Oh, here's the problem. Here's my problem with that. She was on the wrong side of the back of the van. She was on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. Van. <laughs> Johnson was was on the wrong side. It- it was wrong. It was wrong. Thank I you. Didn't I notice that. Yeah. Like, Thank you. <laughs> I texted Blake and I'm like, matter. is she driving on the wrong side of the car? You have the same reaction. We have the exact there same you go. I didn't even think about it. I said the same thing. Oh, you you the can drive car. those cars here. You are allowed, but it's just more difficult, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but, but right on cue, Trent opens up the side door and she's got plunder in the van. <laughs> What's happening? This is so bizarre. But um, no, I, I thought that was great. It middle, was. It you know, was so much fun, that match. I loved I, Some people were complaining. Oh, it's too violent. I don't care. I liked it. I had fun. Yes. The only thing I found a bit weird was Penta. The way it's like he, you know, went to the back. Oh, his costume change? The costume yeah. change, which took half the match. So he wasn't in most of the match. I mean, it, it's weird injury. as well from like a character point of view because yeah. you, you, you wanna, you're you going to leave your friends to get beaten up while yeah. you go and change. I mean, <laughs> how, how very Mariah Carey of him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, He's a diva. It, his, the injury, I mean, when Doc Samson was out there, I mean, it looked like it, it was it was legit, and he's walking yeah. off, and I'm thinking, man, he's really hurt. And then all of a sudden, Alex Abarandi comes out, and you've got <laughs> Kenta Oscuro. I mean, it, the, 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 and the, then the ladder yeah, almost breaking in half. Penta. Yeah, yeah. The third oh, that ladder thing was crazy. Holy, I, I, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm like, try it again. I, I, I got afraid. I got scared. I'm not gonna lie. Because if you remember, across the whole show, seemingly in England, we have terrible ladders that just fall apart, (laughs) but tables that are made of steel. Yes, indeed. I I am the table. table. (laughs) And and obviously, Pentos Girl brought his wonderful tack hammer. Yeah. (laughs) You know, but it never really got utilized. But, you know, I mean, the, the tables... I'm sorry. I think the talent really weren't sure in how to set them up or how to do it yeah. because the tables were completely different than what they're used to. And, and <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm the shots on that table looked like they were very stiff and I, I and I bid your dollars and donuts. The guys got backstage and you probably had welds and bruises on your back. Yeah. I mean, it, it, <laughs> there was no give to those tables. No, no. no. All night, anytime there was a table, it's, like, it's not going to break. It's not going to break. <laughs> They had to do it mm-hmm. twice in order to break it. Yeah. All right. Um, sorry, I took a quick call there in the middle of all that. Uh, so, all right. That's all in. Let's quickly get a roll out. So, as I always say for AEW pay per views, we're doing this on Wednesday. And this is not, a, this is even more important for this show. Because literally, the only reason we even have a card is because two matches are announced on the collision, and the other ones, and the other, and the uh, th- two matches are on the collision. Well, three of them, and two of them are now during the press scrum. Like the only reason we have a card, like <laughs> the only reason we have that is that we have. Um, no. so we'll go through this real quick. This won't take us long at all. Um, Miro versus Powerhouse Hobbs. 
Why? No clue. But we're having it. I actually have no problem with this match. I think it's going to be good. I actually have zero problem with the match happening. I just are we trying to lose it? Are we trying to figure out who's the strongest? Is that it? I don't know. It was like literally this whole match was it made because Miro confronted Powerhouse Hobbs about something. But they, what it was? <laughs> Book of <Hobbs>. Something. <laughs> Why didn't they make it about who's the strongest? I know that's not much of a story, but it's, it's something. Better than right? nothing. It's better yeah. than nothing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Both of these men do need to win. So I'm yeah. not sure who to go with this one. John, who do you win this one? I, I, I'm the same, right? Like they. If either of these guys lose, it's going to hurt them a lot. But at the same time, you don't want it to be like a, a tie or something, you know, like a double DQ. Not that anyone gets DQ'd in AEW, but, you know, uh, something like, we like that. Five, we've literally had like a handful of DQs in the history of this company at this point. There's like, about three, three yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't, I mean, I, I like them both, but personally, I like Miro more. So I'm going to say Miro. Just uh, That's the only thing I can go on, is I like him a bit more. <laughs> so leaning, Miro. Yeah, I'm leaning Miro too, personally. I, I, I think you're going to have like Miro win this because the crowd's going to be so behind him because he's Miro. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 like Chicago's going to love him. But then I feel bad for Hobbs because like, he's lost quite a lot. And if yeah. Hobbs loses again, that means he's in a feud with fucking QT Marshall. Uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> that's the, uh, oh, that is the opposite yeah. of being a feud with QT Marshall. <laughs> I'm who, a big QT defender. Who, Don't... who randomly <laughs> defended some like, Mexican championship on fucking fucking rampage this week? <laughs> so Loved random. it. I don't know what that was. That was so random. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sal, Miro, Hobbs. Um, I, just to be different, I'll say Hobbs just to throw him a bone. Fair enough. That. Can we call it Rusev Day? No, it's not Rusev. It's Miro Day. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about Miro Day? How about that? I just yeah, said that. Yeah, yeah. I literally okay. said that joke a second ago. All right, all right. Well, then <laughs> I, I see Miro basically coming on top and kicking Powerhouse's ass. Fair enough. The only thing is, oh my. I'm hoping that we don't see an appearance from QT Marshall. You probably that's will. That's the problem. Piece of shit. I mean, I that worthless guy. I love how his hatred for Jeff Jarrett is now on QT Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them both. I, 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 I just don't get. QT Marshall, he's kind of like floundering. It's like he's he's <laughs> lost QT in the show. Yeah, we didn't get QT Marshall when he was the Ring of Honor. We didn't get him there either. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see what they're what they're trying to do with him. I mean, friends with Tony Khan. That's the answer to your question. Is <laughs> that it? I think that's the answer. Apparently, he's like a really I, I, good I think Tony needs to get more. That's fine. Friends. Friends. Don't be a trainer. Don't be on television. Don't be I on think Tony needs to get new friends. Like, uh, like I said, if he's a great trainer and he's an awesome producer and things like that, fine. But like, don't I, just don't be on TV. <laughs> oh, how yeah. dare when you, you! When you try to do a a, a spin off or a mimic of TMZ, you crazy <laughs> fail. <laughs> it, it, it's it's not even close. But it's brought hey. us Harley Cameron, who is one of the funniest human beings I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> You and me have different definitions of funny. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> funny. I'm <laughs> insane. Oh my god, it's so bad. So, even though that did lead to the best, like the I'm gay moment with Anthony Bowen and the whole crowd chanting, he's gay. That might be the best moment of the year. Exactly. And but... it wouldn't have worked without Harley being who she was in that scene. Very segment. true. Very true. I can't argue yeah. that point. All right, moving on to a match that's actually a big deal. It is Kenny Omega versus Philosophy Katexia with Don Cal. Hey, I said it right. Um, it did, it, it, this is tough for me because I didn't have to catch him, beat him at all in. I would say you have to catch to beat Omega here and be like, oh, Kenny can't win without Callus, and that actually would be a really good storyline. The problem is you had to catch him even all in. <laughs> so I, I'm leading to Omega winning just because of that. That's the only problem. Like, that's the issue here. Um, Sal, what do you think? Yeah, um, I, I was thinking the same thing. So I'm going to say. Kenny Omega wins, I don't know, with help, maybe from the Young Bucks. I, I don't know. I don't know either. Dad? How many wrestlers does Don Callis have in his stable? One. Duquesta. Exactly. <laughs> and a great family. Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. He pulled a fucking Bobby Heaton. On the on the on the commentary says, I don't have a faction, I have a family. He pulled Loved a hot fucking heated. Yeah. I couldn't believe he pulled that line out. <laughs> you don't have a family, you don't have anything, you don't even have a flipping mini stable. If you want a family, have it like like 
Bray Wyatt had a family. There you go. You don't even have that. Like I, I, I could not believe he pulled out the Bobby Heaton line. I commentary like, oh my god, he pulled that out. Like, it's brilliant. <laughs> I love it so much. I he mean, just gets better and better. The the, the only <laughs> thing I can see is Kenny winning, which leads to Don trying to recruit others into his family, and possibly the person I see going to his family would be Ricky Stars. Ooh. I could totally see that because Starks is going to need something to do if Punk's not around. He's going to need something to do. <laughs> there you go. Um, Can't be Punk's punching bag for I, I almost feel bad for Starks because they were sitting at Punk versus Starks for this show. I almost feel bad for him because he was holding <laughs> on the show against Punk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, John, go ahead. Right. I hate saying this because Kenny Omega is my favorite wrestler in the world. I actually think Takeshita is going to win. To set up the kind of storyline of like, like, you know, Kenny, he'll feel like, oh, maybe I can't win without Don. You know, that kind of thing. Like he he loses a bit of morale and he has to fight his way back to the top. So I, I think Takeshi might get another win over him. Okay, fair enough. That actually makes sense. Ooh, I'm not sure if they were going to do that or not. All right. Um, the only women's match announced, and I really hope that Tony Khan hit hands and adds another women's match to the show. Um, is the AEW TBS Championship. It is Chris Statlander taking on Ruby Soho. Not gonna lie, lost Statlander. Forgot she was champion for a little while there. Um, <laughs> don't know why this match is happening except for that Ruby said, "I want to face you," and Statlander said, "Yes." Um, <laughs> there you go. That's it. Um, Statlander retains. John. Yeah, I mean, we know why this match is happening, right? Because he forgot to book any other women's matches. And he's like, well, I need one. <laughs> so, and we just had the, you know, the main title. Let's get the TBS one on. It'll be fine. Um, but yes, Statlander retains. She's not going to lose it now. Surely, surely. The reign's barely begun. So? Yeah, um, I'm a little upset that Chris Statlander did the impossible, right? She beat... Jade Cargill, the undefeated champ. And that's it. Like, there's been nothing for her. So, at this point, let her keep the title and maybe Jade can come back and take it back at this point. I, I, uh, I, Dad? Somehow, I think when Chris came back from her injury and she beat Jade, I was expecting more a program with her that would be better what she's got now it, it just kind of she gets she gets lost like it it's like she's like an afterthought and i hate saying it but that's the way it seems if you really want to do a good program with her here why don't you put her up against soraya and let's do belt for belt and let's see who comes up victorious so then then chris can say okay i'm double holder and then she can relinquish the TBS belt and keep the woman's belt. I, I feel like they were, I thought that they were going to do a Jake Cargill. I didn't do that. So if they didn't do it with Jake Cargill, then they're going to do it with everybody else. Like, well, at the very mm-hmm. least, she needs some kind of a feud. Something. Or something. Or something. Yeah, or I mean, she needs for longer than, like, oh, someone challenged me. That's it. Like, she hasn't been in hot squash matches. They're, they're doing worthless squash matches on Collision. She hasn't even had one. Like, <laughs> I mean, look at it this way. If you want to start a feud, have her feud with Britt Baker DMD. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. I mean, it's not a terrible idea. I mean, Britt's not really doing much of anything else, so why not? She's she's another one who's just kind of floating around. Yeah, Britt Baker, like the biggest the biggest star, technically, that they've got. And it's like, eh, eh, what's she up to? Nothing. Right. All right, so let's move on to a match that's interesting. So let me just explain this match for those that are having they're doing this, they're hearing this after Dynamite and wondering why I'm saying it this way. So on Dynamite this week, we're having a match at Art Cassidy versus Penta for the Inter- International Championship. Why? Because Tony Khan said so. Um, <laughs> that's what's happening. Um, so it was just set up during the press scrum. Well, OC then went and said, well, I want to face Moxley at All Out. So Tony TK's like, well, if you beat Penta, you can face Moxley at All Out. So here we are. I'm assuming OC's going to beat Penta. There's no reason for me to say he's not going to. So we have AW International Championship, Art Cassidy versus John Moxley. <laughs> All out. What the fuck? Um, how did this happen? How the hell did we get here? Uh, John? I, I don't know if this is controversial of me. I think I think Moxley might be the guy to finally beat Cassidy. 
because we know his whole story is kind of like he's getting more injured, more injured, more injured. And who better to take advantage of that than someone hyper-violent, John Moxley. <laughs> and he's also someone who likes to travel around, you know, to other promotions, which the original idea of this belt was that you did that with it, if you remember. So maybe they're like, well, you can take it to GCW. You can take it, you know, to other places with you and, and do that for a little bit. That's a good point. Good point, Sal. You know, I was thinking about that and I thought to myself, well, they probably abandoned that whole idea. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think... The purpose of this match is to make Orange Cassidy look strong, injured. So I say by some crazy way, Orange Cassidy is going to beat John Moxley, a former world champion. You know what's funny? I'll throw it down in a second. I was actually leaning toward OC winning only because Mox doesn't need this belt. <laughs> OC needs the credibility of beating someone like a John Moxley even more. And Mox doesn't care. Mox loses the match once in a blue moon. It happens, he'll move on. He's Blackwell Combat Club and they'll just do their thing. Like it doesn't really make that much of a difference to Mox no. if he loses or not. He said that openly. He doesn't care as much as a lot of people think he does should about winning or losing. He just wants well, that, that great that's a good point. Like it doesn't seem to affect his character when At he all. loses. You don't think, oh, he's no. weak. You just go, ah, well. <laughs> he lost the world championship. It was like, okay, we'll move on. But move on. Like, he got the world championship and he kind of moved on, like, easily. <laughs> so, like, think about it that way. Um, Dad, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I, I was leaning towards Orange Cassidy retaining, but I'm thinking John Moxley may win, have this belt, because you've got Claudio has got the Ring of Honor championship. You don't have Wheel Yuta with any belt yet, but I'm sure he would go after, like, the pure championship again and then have the combat club with belts to legitimize the combat club. Cause right now, I mean, they're being utilized stadium stampede and other things. And the, you, they were hot in the trios tournament for a while and trios um, matches, but they're not doing that. So what better way to, to kind of cement that by basically having that faction have belts on them, to say, okay, we've got this belt, but now we want to challenge for the trios belts. Yeah, I'm with you there. I like that idea, but I think you just go for the trio belt then. Why don't you just challenge the acclaimed and daddy ass for that then? Just do it that way. Now that the belt are all health of black. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say, but I, I think putting this type of belt on John Moxley would be good. I do like uh, John I like John's theory of him like defending it everywhere. I do like that theory. I like that too, yeah. The only just, problem with that is they haven't done it for ages. It was the original idea of the belt. Impact it. Oh, okay. he, he can't address that. Was the last he can't address that. Yeah. He said, well, it was easy for Pac because he lived there. So, of course, he's going to go defend it and show in the UK because he lived there. Right. That was the, the explanation for it. So, right. although this, my idea isn't international, Moxley is somebody who does a lot of indie dates. So, we yeah. could take well, the belt. Apparently, around, OC. You know. OC, like, they, they, they're they trying, they actually want him to defend at New Japan eventually. Right. So that would be interesting. But Mox could do that. Mox could do that, too. You know? I was going to say, wouldn't it be more inviting, Moxley having this belt and then bringing in top talent for, for that night to come and challenge Moxley? And, and that we're not Russell talking, Dream. That Russell Dream. You know, something like that. <laughs> I mean, you, you could do that and John can do what he usually does, which is bleed, kick, punch, <laughs> scratch, gouge, bite, fork, fork, fork. I think it's a done. John thing. I bleed at the drop of a hat. <laughs> like, <laughs> do it on purpose, though. That's the question. Do you do it on purpose? <laughs> well, I mean, I, like I said, I, I, I would see Moxley winning it for this match. All right. Let's move on to the TNT Championship match. It is Christian Haynes. I mean, Luchasaurus defending against Darby <laughs> Allen. Um, <laughs> Would, uh, would um, you consider this a handicap match? I just call this stupid. Because um, <laughs> this is the only match I had out for all out for one like a month. <laughs> um, I, I don't care. So Darby wins. John, <laughs> I don't really care either. Um, 
it could really go either way because you could have Luchasaurus retain to keep this whole thing going where Christian calls himself the champion. But you could also have Darby win it so Christian gets angry at Luchasaurus for losing it on his behalf. Like, how dare you <laughs> lose my title? Kind of. And the then question they I have, though, the question I have is Luchasaurus' dad dead. <laughs> that is the question I have. <laughs> That's a good point. He can't feud with him unless his dad is dead. I love the way they, they brought that up, you know, in the build up to. Uh, to I mean, wouldn't him. his dad have died like billions of years ago? When all <laughs> <of his laughs> That's my favorite part. There and you go. Know, yeah. There was a montage I saw online the other day. If someone put together the all the video of mont- a montage of all the time Christian Page talk about somebody's dead Derek Van Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and like, what? it's so funny because the first one was Jack Perry and the crowd's like, oh. <laughs> The last oh. one was against Nick Wayne. The last one was Nick Wayne, and the crowd reaction was so funny because you heard the crowd at two like, "Oh shit, he's gonna say something." <laughs> <laughs> so at, at, this, at, at this point, why didn't you consider Luchasaurus' dad a fossil? Yeah, that could be part of the joke. That'd be great. There you go. <laughs> if you yeah. a fossil on the screen, uh, I would uh, die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my dad. Oh my god, I'm, that would be hilarious. I'm gonna say Luchasaurus wins just to keep this going, and he hasn't been healed for long. We don't want him flip flopping like you know. He does. He doesn't need to be a new big show. Okay. Fair enough. So <laughs> Luchasaurus retains, keeps it going, but I think eventually, when he does lose it, that leads to Christian getting like you know pissed off with him and they have a feud like Fair you've enough. lost my title <laughs> uh Sal. um yeah I, I, i'm kind of liking the whole cage thinking he's his champ thing it makes me laugh it makes me smile so you know let's just let's, let's keep that going for a little bit longer sometimes that's just as important you know <laughs> sometimes it's <just> <laughs> <laughs> and it's oh, funny God. that there's two stories of people pretending to be champions though because you've got cm punk <laughs> well he's, he's pretending to be a wrestler right now too <laughs> um, <laughs> no he's pretending to be a nice human being and it's not working he's, a, he's, he's pretending to be a normal person from chicago that just hates the world and decides that he wants to stalk everybody anyway john god your pick uh i'm gonna go with darby <laughs> allen because oh, here's my thing we're going to use the Freebird rule for this match, and we're going to have Christian Cage as an acting wrestler. Oh, my God. Darby's going to kill him. Darby's going to pin him and win the belt. But here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. If, if he pins Christian for the championship, then Christian's going to be like, Luchasaurus with the pin, so I'm still champion. <laughs> I can totally see that happening. I can totally see that happening. Yeah, yeah. Luchasaurus <laughs> gets mad at Christian for losing the belt, and basically Lucha says, okay, you lost it, now you get it back. I know, it's just so funny. Man. That's all the things he Christian doing. Even if he gets pinned and then Lucha sort of loses the belt, he still carries on another team. He's him to belt. He's still carrying Christian Cage on his shoulder. He'll be carrying Christian Cage on his shoulder as he goes back. Oh, my God. I, I'm sorry, man. It's funny to me. All right. Well, that's all out. I hope it's a good hate review. I've been holding off on this all day. I, 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 I've been holding off on this all week because I did not want to do this, but you got to do it. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the so um. This is rough. This is really, really hard. Um, um, so on Thursday, I was sitting watching TV with Mandy, just kind of chilling, just watching. I think we were watching Queer Eye or something, just hanging out. And a phone goes off from a pillow friend with a treat from Triple H. And I stood there for a minute, like, this can't be real. There's no way this could be real. So I jumped over on Twitter X myself and looked up the tweet. And <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, this is real. <laughs> so I sent it out to everybody. And um I, I just had a hard time with this one. When number 10 to Bray Wyatt passed away at the age of 36 from a heart attack from heart complications after having COVID. Um, he passed at least in my brain, at least he fall, he was asleep and he died in his sleep and he didn't like go through the whole big roll of having a heart attack and having to get rushed and all that kind of stuff. Um so I'm already crying. Um, I've had a rough time 
with this. Um, it broke on Thursday. Uh, Mandy saw my entire attitude change. Um, and I had a rough time getting to SmackDown on Friday. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why this is hitting me so much harder than wrestling deaths do. Uh, maybe the fact that he was 36. Um, and maybe the fact that he has children. And I'm, I'm 41 with a kid going to high school. I started high school this week. And I'm, I'm looking at my kind of my mortality, looking at that right now. And this happens. And it literally, I lost it. Yeah, SmackDown. I started crying and I couldn't stop throughout the night. I just couldn't help myself. Um, this is rough. Um, I played the clip of um, he's got the whole world in his hands. That was the Wyatt Children's Choir, as it said on YouTube, and that's from the shoot with John Cena that he had the, the the C Nation singing. And it was like, okay, this is perfect for this. But then I'm looking at the clip. I'm sitting at Panera on Saturday doing the stuff for the show because CJ has Sylvan on Saturdays, and I'm literally crying watching this clip at Panera. I'm like, I'm literally bawling my eyes out watching this. And I'm sitting here trying not to cry right now. There's just two things for me. It's um, Bray the Rustler that we're never going to see any more creativity. We're never going to see it again. Um, and we saw most, so much in, from the original Bray Wyatt to The Fiend to the Fire Hunt Funhouse that we opened up the show with today and everything else. And and then I think about the person. The person turned out to be one of the nicest people in the world. And um, family, and um, I'm losing it. It's rough. I'm having a hard time with this one. Um, so I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it's it was completely unexpected. Um, you know, I think it also hits hard for us, too, because he's current. And we've been literally watching him since his first day. So I think we're a little more invested in him. That I'm not saying that we're not invested in all the other people, because that's not what I'm trying to say. But we've seen him grow from, you know, day one, Husky Harris, with that really bad haircut, <laughs> to what we saw, you know, to, at the very end with, you know, the whole fiend thing and uh, Firefly Funhouse and, you know, the weird cinematic matches that we did and how it carried, uh, you know, WWE for a while and him becoming champion, which no one ever saw that happening because somebody like that typically isn't champion, especially world champion or universal champion or whatever. WWE champion. He was WWE champion. Or, or WWE champion, yeah. Um you know, you know how much I love that Fiend character. I I hold that character very near to my heart. Uh, I loved everything about the Fiend. I loved the way it was executed. I loved everything about it, even the fucking red lights that you hated so much. I loved it because it made the character so different than everything else on that roster, you know, I I can't even explain how happy I was watching him do what he does best with this character especially and then the downfall of a character which I don't want to even get into that because I kind of blame Vince McMahon for that but um you know, the whole Alexa Bliss thing that we never really got to see how that was going to turn out. You know, even this whole Uncle Howdy thing, which I really wasn't into, but I would have loved to see what would have happened. And that was the beauty of Bray Wyatt and, and what he brought to the table and his creativity. And, you know, I, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I don't really see anyone being able to pull that off and do that and have that kind of creative mind to really bring visions to life. I I, I don't I don't see it happening anymore. I, I feel like that essentially is died with him. You know what I mean? Like and I don't want to sound 
negative saying that, and I'm, I'm not, I don't mean to sound, to make it sound negative, but I just, I don't see that happening ever again. And I don't see this beautiful face right in front of me here uh, ever, you know, I, I mean, just, I, I remember the first time we saw The Fiend um, and you and I were like, what the fuck is up with that mask? But I love it. <laughs> it's like a, a face only a mother could love, you know. Um, well, you know the story but... behind the mask, right? That he actually paid his own dime to get that mask made by a horror director. Yeah, I heard uh, about that. And, like, um, that's amazing. But that I... was, but that's the that was the commitment, though. Yeah, he believes in this character. You know what I mean? And and that's what I admired the most. And I think that's maybe why I love that character so much. Aside from you know him being burned alive and all that, but. Uh, or a refrigerator falling on top of him. But <laughs> other than that, um, I, I'm i going to miss that character. I really am. And there's never going to be another Fiend character ever again. There's never going to be another Grey Lion, let's be honest. And um, I know everyone's like, oh, he needs to be in the Hall of Fame this year. Blah, 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 blah. Let's calm down for a second. Let's just calm down. Let's not talk about that right now. You know, He's going to be in the Hall of Fame, I'm sure, at some point. Hmm. Let's not do a sympathy yeah. Hall of Fame entrance. And yeah, yeah, entrance for him because he just passed away. Like, let's just let's calm down for a second. Let's just remember him and take it from there. Dad? What can I say? I, this is a guy, a one of a kind talent that you don't get off it and from his development in F <clears throat> Gloria Championship Wrestling which was WWE's training area um, from what he was there and knowing that his family uh, was in the business his dad, his uncle uh, grandpa and getting all this creativity and, and talent, you know, from his family and to go on and focus on making this your career and then taking it a step further by kind of breaking the mold and being so creative with your character and how you want to present it and who you want your character surrounded with and the, the story of your character and then after everyone was kind of getting used to it and getting over with the white family, then to basically come out with the fun house and, you know, kind of poking fun at children's Saturday morning kind of programming. But, hey, that was his way of being creative and introducing things and having guests and talking about things and, then with his secret, and all of a sudden his secret comes out to be the fiend. I mean, this young man, the creativity he put into everything he did was par bar none. And, and nobody that I'm aware of has even come close to that type of creativity in, in your character and gimmick and how you're able to, I guess the word I can use is metamorphic, metamorphosized, where basically you can take one type of character, change it to this, change it to that, and it seems to work. And he had the crowd, I want to say the whole world in his hands, he did. And everyone responded. And from what I'm understanding from backstage, the talent and producers and everything, that he was just this wonderful, great human being that, you know, want to laugh and make people laugh and make people feel good. And he accomplished all that. And his life was cut way, way too short because I knew that he had more ideas in his head that he wanted to basically do, but never got to. And who knows, maybe sometime down the road when time is right, maybe his brother would, would like to talk about it more. You know, and, and that way you can kind of get to know the inside and outside of, of Wyndham Rotunda, the man that was Bray Wyatt, the man that basically brought audiences and, and filled the seats with those asses and did such a great job of it. 
surely missed. There, there'll be nobody like him in the future that can can do that, and and no one should to try to duplicate his his, his type of talent and, and and magic because you can't. That would be just totally disrespectful. John. Well, listeners to this show, if they've heard me before, will know I don't watch a lot of WWE anymore. But someone I always followed, always, no matter what, was Bray Wyatt. Because like around the time I stopped watching, it's like you know, I, I need to keep tabs on this guy. He's one of my absolute favorite things in, in wrestling. He was always, as you've all said, you know, imaginative, unique, creative. I personally enjoyed everything he did. I never had a I, I thought you know, I like the Uncle Howdy thing. I like the Firefly Funhouse. I like The Fiend. I like original Bray. I like the whole thing. Even when he had Daniel Bryan in his stable for two minutes, you know, I like <laughs> that. Um, so I I personally was always thinking, oh, I, I hope he, you know, I hope he comes to AEW one day so I get to see him again because I, I, I want to experience this sort of creativity and whatnot. And um Obviously, that were that never was going to come to pass, sadly. And when I first saw the tweet from Triple H, my instinct after reading the first couple of words was, "Oh, he's been released! Oh, great, he's been released! He might go to AEW." And then I read on, and it was like my heart just sank. Uh, I, I didn't expect that at all. I, I knew he hadn't been seen for a little while, but I, I just thought it was some other behind the scenes kind of kind of crap, you know. Um, passing away at thirty six is. That, that's awful. That's absolutely terrible for the family and for, for everyone involved. Um, as you say, I was hoping to get to see where he was going to go. I think it's, it's sort of a tale of um, like a missed opportunity for, for all of us because I think he would have kept going and growing and evolving. And I don't think he'd even reached his peak I know he yeah, sure. 36, a lot of wrestlers might have hit the peak. I don't think he had. I think he was going to keep on changing and getting better and better and better. I, I hate to make the comparison, but like an undertaker, you know, just constantly building. Perfect comparison, building. actually. Perfect. Perfect comparison, yeah. actually. So it's, um, it's a real shame we're not going to get to see that, you know, as fans. And by all accounts, he was a, a lovely man as well. So... It's a it's a real shame on that front as well. The the world's lost a, a nice, loving person. I'll close it here and, and I'll say, um, I, I and people know me, we've been doing the show for a decade, and I don't think I've ever cried on the air until today. I don't think I ever have. Um and um it's people there's a lot of people that always ask why wrestling fans get like this. Look at the same thing happen with Eddie Guerrero and people like that and get emotional and this kind of happens. And I do want to tell people out there, the reason being is it's different than watching a TV show or watching, or we talk about Bob Barker at the top of the show and how that was our childhood. I think wrestling is different because we live these, we lived these characters. We watch, like Seattle said, we watch them grow up and we watch this stuff happen on TV every single solitary week, all year round. And we get into it. Like talking about Terry Funk earlier on the show, and it's we, we all get attracted to it and when someone when we lose someone this is young especially because we're the dad's the oldest one on the panel but like still we're all still pretty young ourselves but to watch someone die and you know that you're not going to see him anymore it makes it rough and you don't realize it until it's over and that's probably mm-hmm. why it's hitting me so hard because we're wrestling fans and we love this damn sport, despite what we say about it sometimes, and we talk shit about it, and it's what we do. <laughs> what we do. It's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> but we love this damn sport, and um, we love the people a part of it, and that's why it's hard. And I think we're going to close it here, and um, we're going to end the show. And Sal, this one is a set. I made sure I ended the show for you with this, and it is um, Shatter, the Code Orange, the Fiend's entrance music. Had to go out with it. Um, this was I, I purposely put this last for you, Sal, on, on purpose. And exactly what I was doing with this one. I opened with my favorite <laughs> one and I closed with yours. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's get out of here, Sal. Take it away. Go. Uh, yeah, for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube or TikTok, uh, go to the uh, Please, 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 please don't forget, leave a comment or uh, rating and review, and we will read it on the show. Dad, do your thing.
Uh, I'm going to kind of go off script here. Um, here's the thing that people need to remember that these people may be playing quote unquote characters on television, but these are real people with real issues, whether it's health, whether it's mental health, whether whatever it is. And they also have families. These people are there to entertain you to forget about your troubles for two and a half, three hours. And if they did that, then they did their job. And that's what they're supposed to do, entertain you so you forget about your troubles for that short period of time and focus on how they're entertaining you. People like Eddie Guerrero, Owen Hart, and now Bray Wyatt, these are people that basically were in the industry, uh, been around the industry, family in the industry, and this is what they know, and this is how they reach out to entertain you. So remember that these people have real issues and real families. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And just remember, life is way too short. Normally, I throw it to John to do his plug. They did plug at the beginning, and I think we're just going to get out of here now. Uh, <laughs> thank you, John, so much for coming thank on you. today. This is awesome, as always. Um, next week, we're going to come back. We're going to be set things. It's, it's been a crazy couple of weeks in the wrestling shows, so we'll come back. Oh, I forgot to mention, don't forget to watch FE Big Gay Brunch this weekend. DCW, hey. watch that. I'm definitely watching it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've had a lot. I forgot about that. It's on Saturday after Saturday morning, so we can watch that one over on Fight. Um, Till next week. I'm Blake. I'm Sal. I'm Mark. And you were listening to The Blake and Sal Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. See ya. We love you guys. Be safe. Thank you so very much. Goodbye and good night. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs>